uh, and uh, we'll talk more about it towards the end, how you can also be a part of it. But it right now gives me absolutely great pleasure to introduce our main speaker for the day, uh, uh, Milan Kher, sir. And I want to make it a very personal introduction. I don't want to make it a very professional introduction. Uh, he has already shared a few things about himself. You can go to his LinkedIn profile and check out the kind of experience uh, Sir has over the last 30 years. Uh, it's been, it's amazing, a life coach. Uh, and I'm very, uh, Milan, sir, I must tell you that I'm very skeptical when somebody says, I am a coach of any kind. Okay. okay. <laughs> <You know? laughs> mm -hmm. Because these days, it's very easy to become a coach. And mm -hmm. I, because there are certifications which are available, and I have no quarrel with that. But I'm just saying that really coaching, mentoring comes from life's experience. Uh, okay. It's a test match out there. It's not a T20 game. Yeah, yeah, uh, so, and I think I really respect you uh, for what you are, who you are, uh, the kind of value addition you give, uh, you do for people, and what a giver you are, sir. I mean, I witnessed it firsthand uh, that day, and we were connected on uh, social media for so long. But I, it was such a, a great honor and a privilege, and it was it felt so good to meet you last week. And thank you so much for agreeing to be yeah. with us, yeah, and very I'm appropriately. Sir, an EI practitioner, an NLP practitioner, a life coach. Uh, uh, is, I mean, you can check his new LinkedIn profile. But most importantly, you know, what the LinkedIn profile does not tell you is the character of the man. It only tells you the work he or she has done. And I must tell you that Milan, sir, is an absolute giver. I mean, he just doesn't bother what he will get back in return. Uh, and I'm actually reading a book called Give and Take by Adam Grant. Uh, which is a fantastic it's, book, uh, it's a very on, good on, book. Yes. Yeah, it, on, on giving. It's an astounding book, actually. Uh, and, and sir, you are a living role model of that. So thank, thank you, you so much for agreeing to do this little session for us uh, on the art of giving. Uh, so over to you, sir. And once again, welcome uh, to the LCC platform. Yeah, thank you so much. Now, uh, that, 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 that was a very, very uh, heartwarming uh, introduction. And Absolutely not a formal one and something that truly came from the heart, which I so uh, respect. And uh, so since my session is uh, about the magic of giving, uh, yeah. uh, before I start talking, I'd like to give two things. I would like to give profuse thanks to uh, Hariharan for getting me onto this platform. And the second is I would like to give my blessings to everybody who's present here today that life always gives them the very best that it has to offer. Okay. And uh, thank you, sir. Uh, yeah. And, and I'll, I'll be speaking to you all for the next uh, what, uh, uh, 20 minutes or so? 20 minutes. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, I, I'll very quickly tell you uh, how, how the theme of uh, my talk is going to be. I, I'm going to uh, firstly give you a few stories about giving, okay, which will illustrate to you how in real life people have been givers. Then uh, I, I'll talk to you about some of the benefits that are there of giving. And then I'll also tell you that there are certain avenues that are uh, open for giving. So, so, so this is how I'm going to go about it. So I'm going to start with a couple called Sue and Hector in the US. Okay, so, so Sue and Hector decided that they wanted to help children and they said that in addition to their own children, they would also adopt children. So, so that, you know, the, uh, the unfortunate little waifs who did not have uh, parents, you know, they could get adopted and they could get a good house and all. So, so they had two children. They adopted two children and they were very happy with this family of four children that they had. However, they, they saw the kind of situations, the kind of circumstances that orphans or underprivileged children live in. So they decided to adopt more. And they adopted more and they adopted more. How many children do you think they had by the end? I I, I won't get you all into guesswork. <laughs> I'll tell you myself. They collected a family of 20 children. Wow. Okay. Yeah, 20 children. Now you can imagine sibling rivalry happens, naughtiness happens, fights happen, everything happens. And that being America, there were worse complications that happened, but not within the family, but which came in from outside. 
all the girls that were adopted, they got unwanted pregnancies, you know, all, all this kind of stuff. Yet, despite all this, neither Sue nor Hector ever felt bad for a single day of their life that they had almost no personal time that, you know, they, they could not indulge in luxuries because naturally looking after 20 children strains anybody's resources. But at the end of the day, what happened? At the end of the day, 20 children improved their quality of life and these people had grandchildren also and this entire army lives today just a few blocks from each other. So, 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 so this is the kind of fantastic support that uh, you know Sue and Hector were able to build up, and they really set an example for their uh, society. So, 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 so this is uh, one example. Okay, as I narrate these stories, if anybody wants to make any observations, if anybody wants to ask me any questions or anything, then please feel free to do so. Huh? And it's not as if I'm going to reserve some time at the end for question and answers. You can always, uh, you, you know, put in your inputs in between. Now and people second... can use the chat also, sir, in case you want to comment something on the chat. Yeah, 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 sure. And uh, Dr. Sween wants to say something. Yeah. Uh, actually, sir, this is very amazing to hear this. They manage this thing very well without any grudge, without any regret or without any complaints. Uh, but I I want to know how they managed to reach that level um, um, in between all that chaos. Okay, so uh, there are a lot of studies that are done on, on uh, altruism. Okay, Dr. Swain, yeah. altruism. Uh, we 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 generally know what altruism is. It's to selflessly do unconditional things. Unconditional giving. Yeah. yeah, unconditional giving. So so people are simply geared that way so so at a mental level that prepares them now mm -hmm. coming to your question that you're talking about you know how to deal with these things at a practical level yeah. so 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 at a, at, at a practical level it's all a matter of conditioning you know mm -hmm. uh, when we build our strength for example we may first lift 50 kg then we will lift 70 then we will lift 90 then we lift 100 so in development the same way that they, they they acquire two children and then four and then six yes. and then eight <laughs> and, and then <laughs> somehow they don't manage to you know you know feel overwhelmed by the whole thing okay yeah yeah so that's that thank you sir. thank you welcome now we come to india uh, there was a person called baba amte maybe, maybe yeah so so maybe yes. some of the youngsters today may not know but uh, the people of my generation, they know very well about Baba Amte. So Baba Amte, he was a very, uh, very sensitive and a very feeling person. Uh, one day he was walking down the road and he saw a leprosy patient. And that leprosy patient was in the last stages of leprosy. So there was nothing that he could do to help that patient. However, he did not want that patient to die in the cold. So he took his own blanket and he put it on the patient, saw to it that the patient was warm enough and then he walked away. So I'm sure the patient didn't live very much long after that. But at least, you know, this parting act of kindness Baba Amte was able to do. Then Baba decided that I want to improve the lot of these leprosy patients. Now, leprosy patients, beside the medical challenge, they also face challenges from their, uh, yeah, 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 correct, correct, yes. I, I saw in the chat, uh, yes, Mother Teresa and others, yes. He, uh, the, 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 these people face challenges from family, from friends, from society, they get outcast. So, Baba Amte decided that I am going to build a community for these people. And uh, he extensively researched medicine also. At that time, there was no cure for leprosy, but then fortunately a cure was discovered, which was a drug called Dapsone. So uh, Baba Amte sourced a lot of Dapsone. And uh, yeah, An Anandvan, I think, is the place where, where, you know, he was allotted land. He, he was allotted land 
uh, the, the, which was very close to a forest. And uh, he went to this place. He went with himself, his wife, two children and four dogs. Uh, the four dogs, unfortunately, all got eaten by a panther. Mm -hmm. Baba Amte was very fortunate that none of his family were affected. Mm -hmm. However, he kept working. He kept working with this community. And he built a community of 1,000 plus in that, in that township that had uh, medical facilities. It had a school. And ultimately, it even had a college. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, here again, it's selfless giving. Baba Amte came from a very well-to-do family and he could have lived a very luxurious life However, he devoted his entire life to these poor, poor people who, uh, you know, needed that kind of uh, refuge. So that, that, that is another fantastic uh, story that I came across. And any observations anyone has to make, please feel free to do so. But I, I, I surely think that Baba Amte, you know, even if you, you know, have not met him in your lifetime and maybe existed much earlier, there are certain people who are historical, like yes, like like, like Mother Teresa, uh, and and uh, you know so many people from our own country also. Uh, uh, Swami Vivekananda is a shining example of somebody who reformed the entire Indi Indian society. Okay, Swami Vivekananda also could have uh, very peacefully had a life of luxury. He was also from a great family, but still he worked so much for everybody. So. A third story, I think, which pertains to very modern times and uh, which everybody will be able to relate with. And the most fascinating one in terms of human behavior. I want to tell you about this. So, there is a psychotherapist called Dr. Abigail Marsh in the US. Now, she was driving on a, fr a freeway. She was driving on a five-lane freeway and suddenly a dog came in front of her car. Now, you know, we are always taught that if you are going at speed on a road and a dog comes, just keep going. Don't swerve, otherwise you will get into much worse trouble on account of that dog. However, you know, the milk of human kindness, it always flows in the hearts of most of us. I think 90, 95% of us will not obey that rule and we will try to do something to save that dog. Am I right? So, so uh, Dr. Abigail did the same thing. And uh, she swerved and her car spun around 180 degrees and it stalled and it just stood there in that five-lane expressway. There was a person who saw this happen. He was at the other, at the extreme lane away from her. He pulled his car over to the shoulder. He ran across, across five lanes of speeding cars. He ran, risking his life. He got to her car. He got her car started. And he asked her whether she wanted to be driven to wherever she was going. She said no. So he said, I think you're comfortable. And he pushed off back. Just imagine, he crossed five lanes risking his life. He got her car again, started for her. And he did not even tell her who he was, what his name was. He was not interested in any kind of reciprocation from her. He was not interested in any kind of reward from her. So... You know what? I, I I I think there are people who are simply made that way, and uh, I I I have seen this in a lot of uh, you know when when I was uh, posted in Jalandhar, I, I used to go around to places around Jalandhar, also Nakodar, Koshyarpur, and all those places, and, and I saw there's a huge langar culture, and 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 where uh, you know people. Uh, distribute food in huge quantities and whenever there's uh, especially if there's a famine or there's some problem and all you, you know they don't ask for anything uh, yeah ni 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 nice to know Dr. Sreen so I've been there <laughs> I, I, I've been to Adampur, Kartarpur, Bias oh, wow. Jandu Singha all those yeah. places 
<laughs> okay, so yeah, so so there again, I saw saw that. Uh, okay, you're you're from Jalandhar. Okay, right. Uh, my fondest memory of Jalandhar is Green Hotel <laughs> <laughs> and Skylark, and uh, there was there was a Vaishnav Vaishnav Dhaba called Vijay Dhaba. Vijay so, Dhaba. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so so all those places in Jalandhar have very fond memories. Okay. So, so, so the, 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 these are some of the stories, okay? These are some of the stories around giving. Now, I want to ask you a question before I move to the section of on the benefits, which will be the last section, the benefits of giving. What do you think are the benefits of giving? Please feel free to uh, 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 unmute and speak. If you want to put it in the chat, you can put it in the chat, but it's easier for me to talk to you. Yeah, Dr. Sreem? So what I uh, put on the first priority that is actually self-contentment. It is not uh -huh. for others, it is for self. Okay, so, okay. Yeah. Other things we can say, ke, uh, what I have learned since my childhood, ke if we are self-sufficient, if you are self-sufficient, if you are not self-sufficient, you have a tendency to give them. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. So, when you have a tendency to give them, you so, so I think it's something which in, in your area, I think it is called Sarvata Bala. Sarvata Bala, yes. <laughs> so, 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 so that's, that's, that's absolutely right. Uh, yeah, uh, Dolly Sharma? Yes, sir. I would like to add, uh, like in our mythology also, it is like when you give, it always come back to you. Yes. Uh -huh. So self, it is like selfless giving will always come back to you. Hmm. That's my wonderful. take on what you said. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your inputs. And then we will go with uh, Abhay Kumar and after that uh, with uh, KK. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So one one of the observations I just wanted to share is that in all of these stories, one is common is that uh, they, had, they could have chosen a different path, but they choose to contribute. It is because of their self nature i mean there is a, like the nature they have uh, incurred and they were doing whatever they were doing yeah it, it, it definitely it, it's actually an enigma very we are really not able to understand the the, the psychology of people who are such extreme altruists you know, you know like uh, there are people who even donate their kidney to a stranger i mean given imagine giving your kidney to a stranger there, there are more than 2,000 cases in the U.S. recorded of that. You know? yeah. So, yeah. KK and then uh, Dr. Hinji. Yeah. yeah, so for me, uh, when I give, uh, it is creating that 1% difference in someone's life. Wow. So if I'm able to do that, that's what I do for my students. So when I, okay. it's, it's the joy of giving, basically. And it gives me a lot of bliss. Okay, okay. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you so much. And uh, Dr. Hinji? Yes, yes, sir. See, I, I remember uh, in one of the interviews of Mother Teresa, people yeah. were saying, the interviewer saying, sir, you know, Mother, you are doing so much of work. She said, I'll give you huh. a small example. She said, uh -huh. once they traveled to a famine-struck village, uh -huh. so they, somebody told them, this is a house where people have not had food for four days. Uh -huh. So when she went and gave the food, she was extra, thinking that they will express gratitude. That lady took the food, walked 2-3 kilometers. Half an hour later, she came back. So, mm -hmm. asked what happened. Actually, there is a house which is far away where people mm -hmm. have had not food for 8 days. Wow. He went and gave. She said, see, because I am popular, you know about me. But there are so many people. The humanism goes. There are so many people who do not, who do it because they feel like they have to do it. So they are not uh, anywhere in the news. So she said, whatever I am doing, there are people who are doing much more. Correct. That's Correct. why, that's why this uh, things are moving. So that, that was a fantastic example. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, 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 so in our culture, the, there is a concept called Nishkam Bhavna. So, the, so Nishkam Bhavna is when you uh, do, do without expectations. So uh, wonderful, wonderful responses from everybody. I, I, I think uh, there are huge benefits to giving. It, it raises our oxytocin, it raises our serotonin, it raises our endorphins. So the, medically, it's a fantastic thing. 
uh, uh, when we are closely connected socially, believe me, more than diet and exercise, the biggest uh, the sort of the key to longevity is the social connection that we have. And uh, giving helps us to really have this uh, social connection. Okay, so uh, that that is the thing. And, and ultimately, the self-satisfaction that we get. So this was my little take on uh, uh, giving. And uh, I, I definitely feel inspired to do whatever little I can. All the, the stories that I mentioned of people uh, are, are of people who have done way more than I can even imagine doing, but still they, they stand as an ideal for me, you know. So so so, so that's the thing. Yes, yes, Dolly, our, our own cup, of course, uh, should be full. And, uh, you know, that's how we prepare ourselves to give. Yes, thank you. So, so, so that's about it from my side. Uh, the, the, this is what I uh, had to present, and I'm so thankful to uh, to all the, all of you for uh, responding so much, for interacting so much. I felt that my time spent on on you know giving that talk was worth it. And of course, at, at the root of it all, our sutradhar is uh, Hari Haran, and uh, <laughs> Hari Haran, you are the grand organizer of. Uh, such a wonderful forum. Thank you so much again. Thank and, you, sir. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll conclude um, my uh, talk, but of course, I, I'm around. Yeah? Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much for the wonderful presentation, sir. We all enjoyed thoroughly and really true giving from the heart is an expression of love. And uh, only by giving we are able to receive more in life. So thank you so much once again. All the stories that you shared were really very inspiring, and the way you tried to interact and engage with the members was also like you know. Parul, uh, if I can say, if I can take a minute. Sure, please go ahead. Yeah, sir. What I found amazing about your session, it was so well researched. Uh, mm -hmm. You you actually gave examples of real life people who have done what they are doing. Uh, I want to share a couple of uh, my own experiences. Uh, my wife and me were very blessed uh, in 1996 to actually meet Mother Teresa uh, at Mother House in Calcutta. Uh, and it was one of my dreams, childhood dreams to meet Mother. Uh, I thought I should meet Mahatma Gandhi. The only problem was I was born 100 years after he was born. And <laughs> so, but so he was always my idol. Uh, so I couldn't meet Gandhiji. But I met mother. And the day I met mother, I felt I'd met Gandhiji. You know, and uh, two things struck me about the mother house. There was only one phone in that mother house. Uh, both Hariharan as well as the president of the United States, Bill Clinton, or chief minister of Bengal, Jyoti Basu, called on the same phone. There was no discrimination, no VIP line, nothing of that sort. There was only one fan in the entire mother house. At that time, it was a three-story or a four-story building, a two- or three-story building. There was only one fan in mother house, and that was in the visitor area. So none of the sisters or the nuns who were staying in separate rooms, they in different rooms, they had any access to comforts like fan or air condition or anything of that sort. And only one telephone line. Mother used to speak on that line. To anybody, common man, a famous man, everything. Uh, it was such a blessed experience. Uh, secondly, uh, so my wife used to paint. So she made a, she had made a, a sketch of Mother Teresa, uh, and she said the wrinkles have come out very well. <laughs> you know, that's the comment she made uh, about that particular sketch. Uh, uh, another very great example. <coughs> Uh, he was also featured on KBC. Uh, I am part of a forum called Rex Karmavir, where they award ordinary people like us for doing some good work. Ravi Kalra was a very, uh, uh, pretty rich person very, very uh, in, his, uh, in his own way. Uh, yeah. So he noticed one day that a dog and a man were eating from the same dustbin. You know, and that moment changed his life. Uh, and he set up the Earth Saviors family, especially a lot of the senior citizens who are abandoned on the road by their families uh, and they are left to die. 
she actually did the found uh, Ravi Kalra sir unfortunately is no more now but the foundation continues its work and they actually pick up such people and take them to the home tend to them give them medical aid some people die so they cremate them bury them whatever so i think sir uh, we are very fortunate uh, to experience such people in our life. Thank you so much for this beautiful talk. And the last thing I want to say that HSSC is also celebrating uh, year of giving in 2024. Uh, so if you see my posts, uh, every month we are releasing a free e-learning course. Uh, and every two months we are trying to come up with a free e-book uh, also. Uh, and I also invite here, if you want to contribute to an e-book, uh, please get in touch with me. Uh, and we will make it available for everybody for free. So you also get your visibility. Uh, otherwise, I have to sit and write everything. So I thought, let's try and make it as inclusive as possible. Thanks. Thanks, Parul. I just wanted to add to what sir was saying. Thank you so much, sir. Anybody wants to have uh, some, like, you know, uh, some comment for the sir's session can go ahead. Any guest or member? Yeah, I would like to add to sir's uh, description about Mr. Ravi Kalra because uh, yeah. we are uh, here at Husharpur uh, after I got married to Mr. Prem Sani since 1991. And last 33 years, we are running uh, an old age home, uh, a school for specially uh, able children. Wow. And then a uh, school for slum kids. Uh, we are running a small school for slum kids also near to Husharpur. It is the area Chabbewal. So there is a huge, huge slum there. And uh, in the evening, our computer training institute teachers, they teach those kids. 